No school is an island, and that's sort of what I want to talk about today. Schools aren't just dropped into a community where we actually affect that community, and that community affects us. So this is my community at the moment. Eggersthammer's Primary School and Academy. When I say I work here, people look at me in shock and horror. It's one of the most deprived schools and one of the most deprived wards in our country, with about 70% of our people's entitled to pupil premium. Big white British community, white working class all the toxic trios of deprivation. I've done a word art for me. There you go. That's my word art for my school. Alcohol, drugs, domestic violence, low aspirations, poverty, obesity, isolation. Isolation because we've got a lot of people from the European Union coming into our school. You look around the school and it looks predominantly white British. We do have a lot of children who come into our country as English as additional language. This is my challenge to you and to me. You keep telling me they're hard to reach parents, but I actually wonder if it's not that. I think it's us that are hard to reach schools for these parents. And it's our job to put these stepping stones out. And sometimes we have to go out on those stepping stones one way, just as much as we're expecting the parents to come to us. Standing in our middle class ivory tower saying, come and be like me. I, I think that that's not right, that's not fair, that's not where we're going to go with our families. I'm going to tell you now some of the things I've done since May. Right, Ofsted, we'll go through that one. One of the most critical dimensions of effective teacher learning is the relationship between the teacher, the pupils and the parents. We don't know it all and the parents know nothing. Every single parent is still their child's primary care and primary educator because they've done an awful lot before they come to us at three and four. We're working with a charity called Parent Kind at the moment, Edgar Stammers. We've got lots and lots of resources. And I think this is really important, the difference between parental engagement and parental involvement. For me, parental involvement is you start off with a Christmas fair, summer fair, jumble sale, Easter bingo, getting people to come into on site. And that is important, and that's the start of when you start working with hard-to-reach families. But what you need to do is parental engagement, where we value the part that the parents can pay in their child's education, and we do it together. We have a parents' forum now. We have a parents' hub, the old caretaker's house we've made into a hub, and that's just at the edge of the school. So parents who don't want to come into school actually have somewhere to go. And we have a parent leader. She's in the middle there, she's called Lisa. Out of our pupil premium funding, which is 154,000, a lot of money, I've appointed a parent champion. Somebody on teachers paying conditions, but somebody who works with our families. And we've just appointed two parents from the parents forum to work with her. So we're looking at a sustainable model. I haven't got money forever to have a parent champion, but if I can have a parent champion who can set up parents who can actually do this for themselves or work with the other parents, we might have something sustainable for the first time ever around harder. Here you go. I'm not interfering, but there you go. Parent involvement offers more of a doing to, where engagement is the doing with, and I think that that's what we need to remember. We aren't doing it to the children or to the parents, we're doing it with them. With involvement, you lead with your mouth. With engagement, you lead with your ears. How often do we actually listen to parents? How often do we listen to the hard to reach parents? I had to stand for 15 minutes the other day on the playground where I had to listen to a parent. And I'm I can't tell you some of the four letter words that were coming out at me about I couldn't tell her child, I couldn't do this, couldn't do that. And then after 15 minutes, she went, <sighs> I don't know why I'm telling you off like this. I like you, love. You're nice, really. And then we talked. And it was about her feeling frustrations with her prepubescent daughter who was giving her grief and she was isolated. But how often would we stop that parent and think, you know, who am I? I'm the head teacher. She's got no right to speak to me like that. And we put up barriers. Actually, we do have to manage and lead with our ears. 
The other part of that is the communication. We use dojo, but any full sort of communication. Parents who don't come into school, can, we have a two-way communication system. So we know what they're thinking and they know what we're thinking. Again, some of the messages you might not like, but actually we need to know what those messages are and we also need to provide the opportunities for parents to air them. So we started last summer with a summer fair on one of the hottest days of the year. It was baking hot. We said, don't let Edgar Stammer's parents come into school. We don't have them past the gates or the <coughs> playground. You don't want them into school. They'll be causing trouble. They'll be fighting on the playground. They'll be drunk. We don't have anything like that. We had a really good day where we just let the community come together. This is an American quote. The difference between irritation and agitation. This is what I'm doing day in, day out with my parents at Stammers now. We don't, don't want to irritate them. We don't, don't want to get on their nerves. I don't want to be a nagging head. I'm a nagging wife. I'll own up to that one, but I don't want to be a nagging head. But I do want to get them involved and moving. So we don't irritate, we agitate, we get them involved, we show them what they can do. We did a big event. Every single child in school got a Christmas present this year, sponsored through a charity called Four Steps to a Smile. It's a domestic violence charity and they sponsored us. We're not talking about little presents, we're talking about 60 pounds worth of Lego, iPads, um, the plastic cards that you can buy things for, for iPads. Lots, lots of lovely, wonderful things. We lined the children up and it was one of the best days in my 34 year career. First of all, nursery, then reception. And it was our joy to give each child a bag to take home. There you go, and that's Bobby. Bobby's a looked after child. Bobby hasn't got much at all. Bobby doesn't get much love. And that's just, Bobby's bag's nearly as big as Bobby. And in there, there were, there were just loads of wonderful things he wanted. And then we did the Christmas fair. And the parents' forum ran the Christmas fair. Lisa, our parent champion, was there. And she holds the bank account. But other than that, the parents did it. And it was wonderful. And now we've started on the real meaty part towards engagement. City Standard Breakfast Club. Parents come in and have breakfast with the children on a Wednesday. So it's a free breakfast for the parents and the children, and it's a healthy breakfast. That family's only been in our country a few months. They were really isolated. Mum doesn't speak a lot of English, Dad does. By coming to the breakfast club, they've got friends now. They've got people to talk to. And then we started to educating the parents. That's called Waste Away. It, it's like a weight, weight Watchers free for parents. And then the chip it was delivered to the children with the parents. And then here, that's our school nurse meeting with parents discussing mental health and talking about children's mental health and their own mental health and how important it is that they recognise their mental health as they can support their children. And then we did some work on food groups and healthy eating. And that's our health and wellbeing champion, sponsored and paid for by WNG, the housing, WHG, Warsaw Housing Group. We're putting a lot of money into the Harden and Blakenell area because it's been identified as needing so much support. And then we started very slowly on parents as educators. That was a card making course. And then we've got parents coming into class to read with their children. Something 12 months ago people would say will never ever happen. We've got our first dad. He's up there because that was great. We've got a dad. If you get a dad, he has five times the impact of a mum. If you get a dad coming in to hear it reads with the children. There's our children. 
what we're doing next. So our parent ambassadors are going to be running their own events. WHD are going to provide some life coaching for our families that might lead into education. We're running with also College Level 1 and 2 basic skills courses to try and get some parents in, into work. We're talking with the University of Wolverhampton about doing some foundation degree work in community engagement and com community regeneration. Our parents would work with those undergraduates and hopefully the confidence that they'll get from that, they might go on to university. Parent workshops happen every week in school now and parents come into school. We've got a health and wellbeing team because we need to change a lot. But it's the parents with the staff. So it's the parents who will be sending the letter I've asked them for water, not sugary drinks. 